Hey there, everybody. This is Tavo de Arce. I represent Apostolic America. What is Apostolic America? That means, I think, people that are entrepreneurs, founders, leaders, ministry organizers, the people who have a group, a subgroup that is all around America, but they have their own diverse interpretation, their own higher reasoning and calling. And that is my field. And the field is what you would say niche, niche ministry, niche ministry, which I've done for many years. And so when I've studied and been around, immersed in different kinds of uh, apostolic founded works, you know, streams that bring out other many big streams around America, TV affected culture and different streams from that. And then now we have on the other side of decades of Christian, you know, Christian television. When I look from a perspective of my own dad who had his ministry in a small country area prior to all the TV, I was laughing today. I thought, I told my sister, I said, can you imagine dad out on the field, the church field, you know, in the country with a Facebook page and entourage and a staff to handle him, you know? <laughs> So there is a perspective of might, which can be really great, out, you know, because we're here today. Let's use it. But the other part is you have to be careful because you're really ruling out. And in too many places, the packaging, the form, the formula, the increased etched in concrete subculture and bias within that the neo-Phariseeism different groups mega ministries is like a cult following it's the niche ministry niche ministry gone haywire gone pagan how can you say it's gone pagan well they're all using pagan <laughs> packaging of some sort or else it wouldn't bias against typecast religious hierarchy, you know, cast upper and lower. When I studied, when I first went to DFW 15 years ago into mega culture centric, the capital of all Christian, you know, what we think of, uh, the subculture of Christians, not talking about non-believers, the subcultures of Christians affected by Christian television in the spirit filled realm which produces a mass culture, a massive USA, I call it red state, countrywide, all-knowing, basic, disrespecting, and egocentric, you know, not all, but it's just a, a huge subculture that as in a person who's not of that, who's never belonged to that, just, man, it, it comes against you, notice it, because you're not like that in that performance, achievement, or... Or reach, and I found it because I was not raised poor. My father was sent to the country, but he was educated. He was not country. He was rural. You know, he he grew up in small town, but it was educated and not country. But I was in country, not being poor or country. Therefore, I have a be able to. Any we we were not we centric. We centric is this culture. We And it's because of America being always, you know, pretty white and always the colonials, that part of the white culture, not all are colonials. I do not call myself a colonial. I don't want to own anybody. I don't want to be over everybody. I want to be here so all cultures and colors can thrive. So when we meet cultures, we know that some are indifferent. Some are gentrified. Some are accusing, and I'm talking that this is the same culture, this disturbing culture that says it represents Bible-believing, born-again, Christianity, praying in tongues. Some can be, you know, not like that. There are many that are in that culture, but I'm talking to the Christians. I don't ever talk to anybody except a to the ministers and the Christians and any believer who wants to listen because I believe that the church is full of itself doesn't even know how to relate to anybody but its own mirror face reflected back in its group you are narrow minded narrow minded is not the narrow way <laughs> you know the Bible teaches come to think of it going back to Billy Graham on to up now and the Bible says there is a narrow way 
But does that mean a narrow-minded, religious way that's thorny, that's packaged, that's immune to the new visitor, that's immune to the people going through trial, suffering, homeless, whatever else? And see, because I was not raised poor, I was raised to respect everybody at every level as equals. And when it's called the old-fashioned, old-timey Bible about relationships, the old-timey Bible, do not mingle faith, says Peter, with the respecter of persons. When you have, if, if you have in your ministry a big I, little mentality, big you, little you, you have or you have to pre-qualify somebody before you'll talk to them, relate to them in the name of Jesus. I mean, if you're a pastor, I mean this. <laughs> or your staff, your lay, your second in command. Or your, if it's that much of a clique, a clan, it, you have to pay that much of a price to join, to stick it out, to go there. Why bother? You're just in another ministry mega cult following. That's all. It's not really, a, it's no more a fellowship than a, you know, Hollywood celebrity or a DJ. Now, when we pick our points, it's for the purpose of Jesus. It's for the purpose of provoking, really stirring up your thought. Because there is a need to strengthen. I mean, really strengthen what remains. Strengthen what remains all of us. It's not about me. It's not about our culture, your culture, your your group that you've developed and worked so hard for 25, 30, 38, 28 years. It's not about it now. It's about everybody equally diverse, none, you know, not naming people because you never talk to them. You will get off your holy high horse to even chat to see if it, you know, but it labeling because it's fast. I saw that before I came up here. Systems, legalistic systems, you know, maybe now, I'm not a junior minister, now, after all these years when they've paid their dues, this crowd that's up there now that does this a lot, everywhere, maybe now they're sort of settled back on their laurels, made formulas, convenient formulas, know how to self-protect, know how to get their money, know how to, you know, keep it all... So that because they've been through trouble, now they're expecting trouble. And now they label people from their past, maybe like their mama, that they think and project onto as trouble. So they accuse a new visitor. There for the grace of God go I. But I'm, I was out embedded in the ranks. I have not, you know, not on purpose. When I was 24, God said, I want you to study his body all these moves started. He would lead me by the Spirit. I had a dad as a pastor. I had, you know, criteria of what a real Christian is, down to earth, for the everyday person. And that's who I represent. That's who I minister to. That's who I feel impressed to stir up this thought because you're not in touch. You're no longer in touch with the common person if you're pre-qualifying. And you're so full of celebrity that you have all your handlers and your people trained to do the same. Your clones, your cult. So because of witch watching, because I am a pro I really am a prophet, and was sent on this journey for 30 years, mega to micro to micro to mega, done it all my life, 15 years in hard time, Dallas, the complex metroplex, then I was able to get my eye full <laughs> and my spirit full. And I knew exactly because I'd seen organic, more organic, without all the human religious synthetic additives, man-made. I'd been around as many others, listen, like many others my generation, many others that are out here that weren't raised around celebrity or in a formula or even in a community of Christian showbiz affected. All right, we must now go back, everyone, go back, pull back, and say what is in the Bible. <laughs> New Testament, not the law, not capitalism, not uh, faking it till you make it, not crazy, crazy, adding stuff and 
going into the weird part of, you know, the law mixed with Holy Spirit plus a cult. You don't want to do that. So we, black and white, come back, see, go back to your hidey holes. I'll go into mine and we hear God. My tip, because of all the confusion, all the confusion on the lay of the land in the embedded. It was no longer safe for me to be in the embedded when I was in Dallas toward the end. Nobody could discern. They were so filled with the cult, occult following, following their famous celebrity person from California, from you know, Dallas from everywhere else and all the little goody goody stuff going on, you know, details of their performance of their patriarchal ministry, basically. Well, then I realized it wasn't safe. They couldn't tell a, a prophet Elijah from a Jezebel. They, I was getting called evil so too much. It is a trigger sign for America and these kind of people, this religious spirit. So as a prophet, woman prophet, just sent by a, as a person, I was never dialogued and typecast and dismissed for my gender until I got in this crowd. No other crowd does this. Black people don't. Black Baptists don't. Only this crowd. So it makes me think of inequality for the way they mistreat, abuse, and accuse falsely, typecast females, certain kinds. That's your choice. So we pull back, and I pulled back, really I pulled back and went online, but I study their doctrine, and I'm going to write, I'm teaching now, the art of whelp, to give how, the art is abiding relationship, theology, my ministry, website, relationshiptheology.org. It's the abiding relationship theology involving whelp. Because it is only the things that I watch that hurt people, that confused people, that were misogynist against people, that were racist again and wouldn't dialogue but were like haughty toddy and standoffish no humility and you want to murder people because your false teaching says we better not talk to them we better not we don't have, want to dialogue they're tainted but well we'll believe you're a witch and tell everybody in our similar white cast around the country they are and i had been already down to florida i've been all over so it didn't just one group it's the same style group. So I went down to Florida, Tampa many times, Orlando many times. I spoke, I visited, I got to network and see the spirit move, which I love to do. I'm not a tourist. I'm a sent one. So then when I went down there, I, I liked the, a lot of it, but I never heard a lot of this. They were very occult and they're a lot of, you know, grassroots is occult in, in the mix of what is prophecy and Holy Spirit. So then I started to notice the witch watching a bit. First time, Celebrity Church, first time in 2003, 96 to 2003. So I just started to examine doctrine and what kind of people do it. Usually it's immature and white. Why? So we go back and we think, now how can, therefore the grace of God go I, but how can we make Jesus' houses balanced, safe, not mean? When I was down there speaking, after the service, because I used to do workshops to stir up the gift and get in the Holy Spirit and all that, compose as well as hear God. So I was there, and afterwards the pastor said, you know, this group, which I have a firm feeling it is the one color, the same group, they keep a witch list of all the witches in their headquarters. Well, I believe, you know, I've been around, I know a lot of that kind are in the panhandle. A lot of that kind of white men are in the, you know, up and down Florida, and then are a lot, are <laughs> a lot more in North Carolina, South Carolina, and a lot more up in, all over the places. So does it offend me if they call me one? No, I've been called it. It is warfare of a demon, not Jesus. It is unclean, and it never speaks. It just this is where I get to be an expert in their theology. It really is. I have never, as a Baptist, never wanted to know this. But because Jesus said, if you see something three times or more that hurts you, you know, hurts people, and I met many people, not just me, women, or hurts his good name that's off, 
you were to train on it. This is why it is huge. When you get to where they're going to teach you about the Holy Spirit, this is where I found it, they're guarding, they own they fiercely own the wells of the Holy Spirit. If you read Ode to Whelp at the top of online fellowship, well, it's off because I was busy moving. I hope it's on the next few days, but read, uh, I think it's on dfwleader.org. DFW .org. The Ode to Whelp, I put that up there as the fruit of this same misogyn misogynist, biased religious spirit. Now, the fruit is not just you know, deer in the headlights, that's one kind. They come out of Missouri usually in that deno white denomination and anybody's been through. I know my, I know my whelp, <laughs> the art of wealth, the relationship theology, what they do with their relationship. Do I forgive them? Yeah. All right. It's God's grace that I, you know, for the sake of the Lord and for the heroes who try to go to worship where there's the Holy Spirit so you're not beaten down or gossiped about or attacked by spiritual psychic warfare spectral evidence google that massachusetts witch trials style spectral evidence they use that bad so we have a we are teaching so they don't get judged we're not accusing we've assessed but we're judging the fruit and this is impure fruit lots of it clubbish clannish self-protective and then they will pray some of these not all some of them are pure-hearted, but some of them I've known in the Deep South that pray against people. And I know that is sin. So we're warning them about lawlessness and all that. One of the things that the Bible teaches, Proverbs 27, We really I'm being so candid, so above board. Anybody could have talked to me if they wanted to know and dialogue all my life, 30 years in prophetic alone, and I could have set them straight, you know, talked about it gently, reproved or whatever, been their friend. So now I'm doing it online because I'm not allowed. I'm not, women are, this kind of woman is not allowed. And, you know, it's because I'm the real person. <laughs> I'm not trying to, trying to come up with anything. I'm just a spiritual litmus test because I have a deliverance ministry for them. My old pastor friend used to say, he said, you know, never be afraid to have, oh, when a demon starts to manifest. I went, whoa. He said, it's just a sign it's ready to come out. So thank God he told me that in 2000 before Dallas, before all this really got, oh, you know, mega, mega, mega. And I thought, all right, even though it didn't fun, even though they're mean, even though they'll talk about you and they won't speak. Wow. On behalf of many others, the prophet knows and is aware and apostle so i just think of the dialogue and let the lord give me words because i think proverbs 27 verse 6 faithful are the wounds of a friend i can love you enough to tell you i shoot straight so you don't die early or go you know god didn't judge you on this movement he is going to judge because there is also in that Different groups, mega, a lot of mega, and lot, and there's hard heartedness. The only reason I say it because I love them, and I respect them, but I don't want you know. The Lord is a prophet, is a person who happens to be their anti. Their, I'm not anti you, but you're anti me. This kind litmus test. I'm here because God wants you to know it's judgment, not accusation. It is just time. He's not putting up with foolishness. All this is just basically foolish. It's not in the Bible. How do you know? I read, because of this, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, when Jesus Christ was alive in ministry, walking the earth with males, females, fallen women, fallen men, demoniacs, little children, and his mother. And I read every relationship, how he acted and reacted and these do not meet the criteria of Jesus. They're religious. They're ornery. It is my opinion that all those who call the Jezebels most in the nation, that see the most Jezebels from far off, spread the word, on a continual, habitual basis, they are the Jezebel spirit. That's why I confront them. You know, according to Revelation, churches, Hyra, Thyra, 
Why do you tolerate the Jezebel spirit, man or female? I don't. I'm the lampstand leader of this movement, of this whatever. And it would be wrong of me. God would hold me accountable if I didn't you know, confront a false controlling teaching and movement. Movements. So I am. Um, within the spectrum, which I'm going to get to and I need to get to when I teach more on the art of whelp. Art means looking through the at the whelp at the fruit of their relationships. Do they have the fear of the Lord, actually? And the whelm, which is their female sidekicks of authoritarianism. <laughs> but we'll focus on the whelp, the art of whelp. All right, so we'll do that when I write it and I'll post it different places. And it was, it is probably the master spirit. It is probably the toughest, I mean, immovable, totalitarian, fascist spirit in the United States Christian ministry anywhere. I've never met it. But I don't have to deal with it. All I have to do is confront it and they can take their choice who they're going to serve. I'll take it because I know God is... He's out here with me. He's out here in the normal people, the grass people. It's a relationship and really not a white move at all. It's an equal opportunity, real respectful move. That's why I'm respecting you. I can respect you by confronting you as a Caucasian whelp. All right. If you're not, if, if nobody feels any shoe fits, that's fine. Don't take it. All right. So when I look at the parallels in studies, my deep studies in the Deep South, in the Deep, Deep Southwest, it started originally in 2010, 13, something like that. So many, you know, discussions on it. I, I realize there is a temple high priesthood of Eli fame, infamy, in that movement. The Eli temple high priesthood fruit equals whelp, too many whelp. I won't talk about it now, but I will. It is also the same spirit. You know, Eli was an LP, the misogynist Eli, user and abuser and full of himself. All right. So then you go over to the New Testament and you find the lost first love lampstand. From, you know, God said, you know, watch out, strengthen what remains or I'm going to take your lampstand. He can not wanting it to, not finding fault with that. Just watch out for this kind of false counterfeit religion that tries to get money out of God's people that says it's a Christian when it's really not. It's for itself. It's more like the Matthew seven twenty two at this point. At this point. Many will say, Lord, Lord, didn't I prophesy? Move in the gifts. Do all these miracles and wonder-working power in your name. And he says, out with you. I have never knew you. Depart, you who work lawlessness. All this is, what I see, is misuse of false authority, which means lawlessness in the, in the um, Strong's Concordance. One of the meanings. Lawlessness, using your look, your sheen, your power, your prophetic gift, your power, your your strong will, your exertion of false demonic strength to block people and manipulate or control or, you know, using your seer gifts to scan but never speak. I mean, go to Florida. Oh, my gosh. This is, you know, Dallas, certain parts out here. It is the spirit. It is a, a witchcraft spirit. It is witchcraft and occult in the Christians who call everybody witches. <laughs> celebrity now not everyone has it if they're celebrity and we're going to teach on what is celebrity versus renown renown is more safe it's a bible word but that is what we got when i studied when the lord had me encounter this where it really encounters me i don't do anything but show up and sit there at james three seventeen fruit that represents the wisdom from above like i always have and then I found when I went to the movements that move in the Holy Spirit and great worship, that's what draws you in is the worship. It draws me. That's the only thing I really go for. <laughs> of course, other people are dependent on this. You know, we want a word. We've got to have a word. We can't hear God for ourselves. 
So that is, everybody's, you know, everybody's different. But I was always going for the right reason. You know, God would lead me. Well, that's when I didn't know that when you get drawn in, you can get drawn in and there's other things swimming in the doctrinal bathwaters. The doctrinal bathwaters is my illustration. If you take a bath, you want to make sure there's nothing else in the water that's not pure, that would contaminate, that would cling to you later, that would be a shocking, slimy, filmy, dirty, soiled thing. Or you wouldn't want to go in that bath and see this is what we're telling you. It is like this. It needs to be cleaned. Oh, yeah, we got great, great power. We got great spiritual accuracy. We can just sit here and dream that you're a witch. We can say everybody's a witch. We can say everybody accuse you, but we don't have to know you. We're too aloof. We're too proud. We don't have to. We're so superior. That is how the going from what is a Elijah's seer that can hear in somebody's bedroom, you know, like they know what's going on in there, which I have the same, I'm a peer, I'm their, I'm really their peer, but I don't want to be that kind of peer, but I study it because it gets used a lot against me. I can tell it, fault finding spirit. So I've studied it for decades, finally getting some ideas about it. And so I think, you know, all it is, is do I dare say they're lazy? Do they dare say they're proud? But anyway, why would anyone in it that say like a Baptist or somebody who's not ornery, uh, most people like black people, they will, you go in, they, they actually say hi. They actually look at you because they relate. So we're trying to stir this up because it's unholy mixture. The Eli Temple High Priesthood bringing down America like the Isaiah 1 through 3 leaders of God's day that were now calling people evil, good, good, evil. And these are visitors. I do this when I get vis when I visit. This is to a red flag, a big red flag to wake up everybody and say, it's not about your ministry or you and your occult following. It is about eternity and the normal people the people who are hungry for the lord or need healing or need the holy spirit they need to be able to save and get in the prophecy and holy spirit without all the warfare without the emotional intrigue the dark devil side of it and i'm gonna i have my own ministry so i'm gonna work on that without the whelp spirit and hope you know pray for me so i've been thinking of many people in the grassroots culture who are not whelp but they're very gifted we just, everybody just needs to do their thing. Let God show them how not be in competition, not hurt anybody. But it is so mixture, just too much mixture that I have to speak on it at this point. It's not nice. You are innocent. You go in there and they call witch watch and evil, good, good, evil. To really speak truth. If they are that, if, if we're all, if any of us are off that much calling good evil on innocent people, pastors doing this, saying they're prophets, they can't tell Elijah from a Jezebel sitting there quietly, time after time, group after group, I'm your litmus test. Then how in heaven's name? For heaven's sake of eternity, can we believe they are actually hearing God in the other parts of their ministry? Leave it up to you. Huge issues, real issues. Religious or Jesus? Right and perfect and bringing in the well-oiled, healed, trained folk to get more, you know, real skilled but no love. Poor me. Oh, it's just one more complainer. You know, she's haughty. She's, you know, that's what the misogynists say. In DFW, when I found the lake of fire that represented the church fruit on the land, <laughs> I felt I felt I couldn't really, uh, and this was not just the, well, it was well, but it was also the Bible quoters and Bible thumpers, you know, certain ones in the country, similar white TV affected culture, the subculture. Not all are like that.
but it's a huge subculture and a lot of good old boyism. And I trigger good old boys, it turned out. I didn't know that. All these thousands and millions of nice men who've never been triggered. Thank you. But because I must have been on a special assignment to be in that subculture, I realized I trigger good old boys. Good old white boys. Not black ones. White boys. I trigger good old boys. So I triggered. I thought, you know, if I'm racially, if I stir up the spirit just for showing up, can't do any. It's misogynist. It's biased. It's a cultural thing. It is uh, impervious to anybody but them. And it is a huge thing. And I used to think in Dallas, I think, now, if I'm sent as an expat from the East Coast, which is, I guess, more civilized, I don't know. I'm not saying it is. But if I'm down in the subculture of the natives, this is where it lies. That and the mega, who were raised like that. And I'm going to be that awful because you have to get this guy right. You really do for many people. I'm going to do it because I love you. I really do. I would have said it privately, but you blocked me and withstood and stared me down and Anyway, I love the Holy Ghost more. So I realized this culture is there, good old boys with its whelm, the good old girls, and it is a fierce, dominating spirit, a master control spirit with occult, white witchcraft, and real witchcraft, and real prophecy. So you got to hear God, everybody. But when I first got there, I went, I was taken aback. <laughs> I'm so self, I was so self-spoken back then. I was so like, not a person, people pleaser, but just like unduly respectful. Oh, yes, that's how they were trained. Oh, that's how they were raised. You know, I wasn't, but I would note it. But I thought, now I got to say it. I got to say it. For the Lord, for the children, the future. God was saying the future of the church is at stake. Just like the Eli Temple priesthood preceded a whole new move before it had to leave before the new move started, when Samuel the prophet came on the scene. We're at that time. We've been at that time. Just like the Isaiah, the God was warning the priests, the red flag, their sins in Isaiah 1 through 3, making them duller perception and inaccurate of hearing clearly from the Lord because of their little G gods, their false teaching and their vanity that it made them call evil good and good evil. And therefore in chapter 10 of Isaiah, the national whole lot of them, the leaders of God's people were being held accountable because God said, I am here. Chapter 10, verse around 26, 27. I am here waiting to move with my Holy Spirit, the yoke breaking anointing that would make your neck so fat that no fierce nation could take you over, control you and wipe out your culture forever. So that's why <laughs> these are my reasons. In my Jane on the Isle of Plano time, pulling back, not wanted by the first original disciples of the area, and that's all right, but I pulled back like Paul, so I identify, I learned about Paul, <laughs> he was ostracized and kept at bay for 13, 14 years, so he just went up to Arab, the Arabs and hung out with them, fellowshiped, and he knew God and came back with so much Holy Spirit might and power that he got two thirds of the New Testament. So there, you don't waste your time. So I went online. Thank God for, thank you, Lord, for online for all of us. So I went online back in 2008, I guess. I got there 2005. I was shocked. I had a vision of a baby, a giant pamper, a giant toddler crawling on its knees with filthy pampers by 2006. And that was the ministry. Pulp, the people pleasing ministry out there back then. So the prophet, the true prophet was being, you know, called getting attention. So, I mean, God can, can he uses, I guess he uses a person like this to confound the worldly wise, a foolish thing, the off scouring of the mega ministries apostle like Paul, off scouring of the world, my kind. I like it. I mean, that's fine. We forgive them. Yeah, we forgive them. But why I keep running into this, that's why I got to address it. It is live and rampant on behalf of the body. Christians, the true Christian ministers, you're not all like this. You got to know we're in the last days. You want to know true from fake, counterfeit from real. We're looking for organic, more organic in the fruit. And how you tell them, 
relationships. Watch their relationships. Everybody, not just among the top leaders, not just among the favored few, but everybody from the least of these to this mega giant, are they all equal? Black, white women, are they typecast? So this is the big teaching, a lot of teaching. I looked, and I got to go. My battery's look, running down. I got another appointment. But I, um, I looked up Doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Every so often through the years, I've read all the seven letters to the churches that the Holy Spirit wrote to the churches in Revelation. So I always do that. And so I always think, Lord, am I, which church am I like now? You know, what am I really, how do you, would you say I am? You know, so I try to do that. So I was reading through the first one, the very first one. And turns out it's the church of Ephesians, the Ephesus church that God rebukes. He rebukes it first. And guess what? To me in Dallas right now, I think Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, is the most valid for right now in this culture. It's like a post-Christian culture. They were pre-Christian with all the all the demons and stuff going on, diverseness and everything. I think Elijah is the one of the Old Testament. I mean, I think Isaiah is for Old Testament, but Ephesians. So I was, you know, like Ephesians, always talk about the relationship community. You know that. So then I realized... Here was this amazing book of Ephesians, the group, the detailed, heavy-duty teaching of all sorts of things in Ephesians. These are the first ones the Lord rebukes. They got hard. They got full of themselves. They started to lose their perspective and got in a works mentality. And the Lord warns and said, you have lost your first love. Me, not stuff. Not things, not ministry, me. And not your position or your power, me. So he said a warning to those folk, the lampstand leaders. He said, if you don't come back to your first love, I'm going to have to remove your lampstand. And I'm sorry to say for four years at least, four or five, how many years? Eight years I was down there seeing all this, and I was grieved by it on behalf of the nation and our the people out there. All these mega thousands happily going to the systems and churches, happily going when millions and millions and millions are there in the same contra, you know, metroplex that aren't going anywhere, that don't want to go. I got why. And then I thought, here they want to be challenging you when i would be out in the public and meet this red state culture the natives i thought these people and this was before everybody moved in because of the covid prior to that years before i was thinking wow all these are red state you know to me the word red state didn't mean anything against a republican or a democrat it means they can't relate to anybody in a Christian way that's nice. They can't remember, you know, you, it's our way or snap, uh, what do you call it, knee-jerk type reaction. So red state is not a good word to me. But being a Republican is your choice. Being a Democrat is your choice. That is not my business. This is the goal to point out a subculture that needs some hard work. And it's difficult to the newbie who is not. I would go out there and I'd find more friendly, respectful people in the the Starbucks, the Barista Fellowships, I called them, because they're more fun and more, you know, down to earth and friendly. And I found that all the liberals liked me. <laughs> and I'd meet all these liberals and they'd tell me all their stuff and be all feisty. And I loved it because I thought these are not lukewarm. I was thankful that they were not they were the real deal because I didn't know who was a real person after a few times out in Dallas in the subculture I just mentioned. And so I was there and they'd tell me all their stuff and I was friends, you know, I would be happy to hear from all the latest, whatever they wanted to tell me from the Hindu, the, 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 um, the, it was a Republican Hindu. He was fiery. You know, I go to one group, one, you know, barista fellowship and, the Hindu Republican be there, and I try to keep out, you know, this is before COVID, and he just tell me all this stuff, like vitriol, and I went, listen, tone that down, 
I don't want to hear all this. But I went to respect him. So then I go to another breast of fellowship. There would be the Buddhist Democrat, and he'd be filled with vitriol just like the other one and fill me all. And I, no, please. <laughs> I didn't want to know all. <laughs> I was trying, but I was, I had fun. It was fun to me because I am a wildlife person, you know, and I respected each one because I thought, God, I liked them because they're not compromisers, lukewarm, and they were not disrespectful to the female. They treated me like a real person. Wow. And they, uh, they had really well thought out their beliefs. And I thought, if I can just respect them, and I found out each one's backstory, basically. That's what I would do. Pagans, you name it. But my main thought in this, I was really afraid for Texas. I got a really idea how Texas can really not stay red, if that's your goal. The Texas state cannot remain with everyone and this is now i know why i was thinking that because COVID has happened everybody's moved in from all the blue states and they're still coming same with any other red state if there's no fear of the lord which there isn't if there's no real respect which there wasn't if there's a clueliness of how you need to love somebody by first respecting them as your equal not a sinner not less than whoa i i was concerned i really am so think on these things if your groups that are under the famous preacher i'm not calling the famous preacher him or her out on that i'm saying you never knew this is going i know it's going on i'll let you know right now warn you please pray if you're not a, in, in that group pray forgive them it is not because of celebrity but yet it is celebrity because not the person's famous it's for the people who think oh yeah now i can do it because they can do it he resembles me she resembles me now i'm gonna get my business card my suit package myself take up an offering and i got it i got my maid you know made power position and perks that's what the bottom line wants wannabes so please you know, I'm doing it for the sake of the gospel because I love you. I love all those people too. I'm not mad at you. I'm just, I don't think God is mad at you. I think you got to wake up because there is a day, a tipping point. History is filled with tipping points when God said, okay, we'll tolerate it. Okay, we'll tolerate it. And all of a sudden went, whoop, we're at the whoop. We are. So I Googled one time in 2010, I believe. I googled Doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which gods hate, which is back in the Church of Ephesians, and in another one of the books, Letters to the Holy Spirit. All right, and so in the book of Revelation, the church was addressed and rebuked, two different churches, for following the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which the Lord hates. So nobody wants to have, right now, practice doctrines that the Lord hates, do they? I wouldn't. <laughs> They'd have to be pretty dull of dessert. Pretty. Whew. <laughs> so I Googled it. And the word, basically the word Nicolaitans, Nico is the word Nike. Nike means to control at the root word. Laos is the people. So there was a false teaching that was there to control God's people. I would think that's all you need to know. If it controls people, that means there's something false in the leaders either a emotional spiritual witch watching you know subliminal cult pressure or not or forcing through peer pressure and hierarchy and you know we're going to retaliate we're going to accuse you and we're going to boss you we're going to ostracize you that manipulation which is not holy ghost at that one time when i found it when I discovered it, it says a, a Gnostic doctrine, that means it's a carnal doctrine, Greek doctrine, that came to first infect the churches, the new churches. Now, the person, the only time, and I cannot find it since, that defined it in the following manner, which makes sense, though, and I'm going to submit it because it does make sense about churches today and the society we produced all right, the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, that one article only, I haven't found it since. It said it was the first 
doctrine in the new church, in the first church, that raised and took the fivefold ministries out from among being with the people and put them up and elevated them. I had thought of all through Richmond, all the I'd seen so much during my life. I thought, wow, that's it. Let me explain my opinion. I thought, wow, that makes sense because once you take you know, there's Ephesians 4. It sounds like everybody gets along equally. Ephesians 5, 21, walk in, you know, meekness and, uh, what do you call it? Me, me, uh, walk in oh, mutual submission, the fear of the Lord. There's James three seventeen. A lot of relationship things for community. And so with that in mind, I, I looked, I thought, wow, the teaching, because I think people just didn't know. Not intentionally, but the teaching from charismatic, spirit-filled, tongue-talking that grew into mega, white mega, and black. And I'm not saying all is wrong if you teach balance. But I noticed a lot of it had produced, where I lived, a subculture of dependency, true dependency. And then the teaching in certain groups, usually the witch-watching groups, you got to be under submission, you got to be under a local pastor, We'll watch you if you church hop. We'll keep track of you in tabs. That came in in the 90s, maybe 80s and 90s. So then I realized that the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, if it did take the people and put the celebrity on the pedestal, that's the foundation, it put the only the pastor knows, only the priest knows, only the prophet knows, I don't know, dependency or feeling inadequate or not good enough. It robbed the person from being a, you know, the confidence they need to say, I can hear God too, and I can question the pastor or him or her because she might be wrong. So this lays a foundation where we got a lot of, you know, infants in the body. A lot of dependency, codependency, the pastor on the people to be there, feed is, you know, and then we got to, and to bring the money, and then a pastor, uh, the dependency on the pastor or prophet to, you know, oh, we can't hear, we're not good enough, we're not smart enough, or our skills of sk serious are not, I'm the opposite. <laughs> I know Paul, Paul said, I'm proud of you for studying my doctrine and picking it apart, make sure it's in the Bible. Paul says, work out your own salvation. Don't be a good wuss. When Jim Baker's scandals happened and media scandals, I scandals happened in the 80s, I just started my public ministry officially, you know, public missionary. So I was teaching and that happened and I went to the Lord because I saw the fallout in family members. And I saw it in a friend who used to give to them. They'd put their, you know, both of them had put them on a pedestal back then. It started then. And so what I did, I pulled back because it didn't bother me. And also I didn't feel led to either one of them to contribute. I really never felt a drawing to either. So I was there with God and I said, Lord, what is this that I see? Because it started getting this fallout in America of accusation. So the Lord gave me Micah 7, 5. I thought, I've never read Micah 7, 5. I wonder what that says. I opened it up and it is for right now training in right now it says do not put your trust in a neighbor do not put your trust in a guide a guide do not put your trust in even the one who lies beside you in the bed only put your trust in the lord and that's what i thought back then you know i had no influence but it i was in a church preaching you know teaching everything but it's like that's the secret tell all the people not to put your their trust in you, but to let them pick apart your doctrine, present it as a seal. This is my spin on that. So that if you, God forbid, or anybody makes a you know falls like all these people seem to do, then they will not be crushed, devastated, and turn away from the Lord. A lot of it is turning away from the Lord and cynicism, and that's what I saw in my personal life. That's what I saw with people who are not with me now. The anger, not at me, but at the where they put their trust in a human. If I look at Psalm 118, which is our doctrines of a new day, our whole Psalm 118 theology on teammate university, it's to defrag the law, but it's also to train this because in Psalm 118, 
if you heard that, you know, it's the robocaller, excuse me. If you look at Psalm 118, 9 and 10, either 8 and 9, 9 and 10, it says, do not put your trust in a man. Only put your trust in God. Do not put your confidence in a man. Only put your confidence in the Lord. Similar. The next one, following it, says, do not put your confidence in a prince. Only put your confidence in the Lord. And what I heard, I believe I heard through my life, is those two verses, do not put your confidence in any person. To me, a prince is a leader. Do You respect them. You honor them. You want to hear what they got to say, but you don't ultimately say, you know, that's all. I don't need to think for myself. So you put, it says, don't put your confidence in Psalm 118 and 8 and 9, 9 and 10. Those two I heard one time. They said, those are the main, those are the middle verses of all the Bible together. Old Testament, you knew if you opened the Bible and counted down the verses to the middle ones of that Bible, both sides of it, those are the ones. And that is true. Let me go some more. Psalm 110, verse 1. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes makers come my help comes from the maker of heaven and earth. You gotta go by yourself to make sure and believe on your own. That's it. So if anything, that's my call to help people, you know, get stirred up to do that. And then I love micro ministry. I feel more at home, more comfortable now because you can be yourself. And also there's not this, usually not witch watching cult following, even though I can go and I love to attend a big fellowship because I can, you know, really get it on in worship. That's what I like. I really like, but we are in with the Lord right now in our office and we need prayer. We, all we need is prayer. We want God to connect me with only the right sort, the right ministers, black and white, and we do males and females. We want only to hear the plan for the online fellowship. I plan to keep it going under DFW Leader Ministry Online Fellowship. And I want God to provide, send the right senders to grow it and also the right per, couple of right persons to keep it online. I want to keep it online. Then if I travel, when I travel or whatever I do, I can always have be it going. But I really feel I would like it's time to develop it. But because I can't pray in, on everything and have, you know, I need prayer people. That's really mature prayer people. And then to watch me in the spirit, you know, not weirdly, but just to pray and cover my back. Because I do have an unusual, I do have an unusual call and I do have the yoke breaking anointing, but the devil, you know, these kind of weird warped Christian spirits are not always loving. So that's it. But anyway, the God is good and the new day is here. That's another thing. We are not in the old day. All that stuff that you hear me regurgitate, crap, excuse me, all that stuff, bad fruit, pitiful fruit, that did not mean it has to stay. That did not mean I have to think about it. I want to think of new things. I really would like to teach on worship because I'm a worshiper. I would really like to teach on eyes have not seen, ears have not heard the mysteries of God and getting new insight getting new revelation to hear about God's move. You know, in Adam and Eve day, nobody knew what we know now, the internet. God had it planned secretly. Nobody could have guessed what he's got for us after we die. Heaven. Nobody's figured it out yet. It's going to be great. Paul said to, in the midst of the confused and difficult relationships of the posturing Corinthian carnal church, he said in 1 Corinthians 1 and, excuse me, 1 and 2, verses 9 and 10, to get them to think outside the muck and mire of everyday life, home life, minister, packaged ministry, you know, today we'd say COVID and all that. All right. He said, I want you to focus and get in with God. And he said, eye has not seen, ear has not heard those things that the Lord has prepared for those who love him. But those things are revealed by the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yea, even the deep things of God. 
eye has not seen, no matter how nasty, how wonderful, how beautiful, and video games and all this stuff, something more better from the Lord. He can show you how to find it, where to get it, what to think. What ear has not heard, not the nightly news, not evil, but good stuff. Plenty of good stuff. New hope, new insight for your direction, new things for your provision, new things for your family, your ministry, your art, your creation. Wow. Revelatory realm. That's me. It really is me. All this stuff is when I try to get in the, re you know, just to go worship and take off and find the, re you know, get in with God. That is a revelatory realm. But when you get there, you can't because you're getting all this mixture in the doctrinal bath waters that you can feel you know perceive it's okay you don't want to get in that so we want to start again we have started again and we want to focus on that more on the online fellowship but we want prayer prayer protection and we want the right one or two people that will be the sidekicks that they can also train and teach i might have a couple already but we want to make sure that's the issue males and females this is a, a typical person's ministry for males and females. Rod Parsley, to comfort the legal, to comfort those who are afraid. Rod Parsley said in his Reformation Bible, when I found it in the deep southwest, man's country, you know, all that stuff, misogynist central, legalistic central, when I, you know, I hadn't been raised around it. So that's just another day. So I learned. And so it says, Rod Parsley said that when God looks around his people, the nation of his people, and he cannot find enough mighty men, true mighty men, he'll call up the women. And that's why he called up Deborah. So you got a Deborah, sort of like a Deborah, area Deborah. But we're for letting, you know, Deborah, Deborah, was married to Lapidoth. Deborah went out to be in ministry and judge. She was a judge of the national people of the Hebrews for males and females. She went out to war with the leader because he was afraid. And she did many amazing things. Well, Deborah, a career woman, would go home and be happily married to Lapidoth, who was not even in her field, but he had his own field and he was equally yoked, and surely she felt he was strong enough, more strong, a, a stronger male, that she could enjoy being the cherished, weaker vessel around him. See, you got to know this. Not every woman is fit for every man, and vice versa, because, uh, Christian men, because you got to have the right... You don't want a Deborah if you're a wuss. <laughs> if you can't stand it. And a Deborah doesn't want a wuss. She wants a Lapidoth who's man enough to handle it. I think <clears throat> manly men, if they're true people, they're never moved by a female who's strong. That's what we want. We don't want a yes person or to be have anyone, you know, oh, I'm scared, dear. You don't want henpecked. You want to be iron sharpens iron and respectful. That's what we want. We want yokes that are equal but we don't want to have one saying, I'm over you, or, you know, like, feeling competition, or just got to be, like, like you take off the ministry. That's how I did it. That's how I saw my parents. Equal, you know, Ephesians 5.21 didn't make any, you know, that's what it was. Mutual submission in the fear of the Lord. Husband the tiebreaker. So that, that's how I feel. You know, I watched them behind the scenes. Just be yourself. You're not the minister. You're not the title. You're not the one that's, you know, whatever. That's the way to do it. And with me, after all I've told you about, I don't really care either way. I just want to do what God says. I want to make it fun. I want to make it down to earth. And I want to be myself on and off the stage. And whether I teach or not, I want to enjoy it because I've seen the opposite. <laughs> I speak, I hope. For the normal, natural, everyday person. Nobody's normal. But we're all equal on TV or not. Or black or not. Or finding yourself surrounded by thousands in your own culture or not. It's To me, it should be a community seamless. 
you walk in hey, and you notice, oh yeah, they're a big church, but they treat me with such respect. Even though I'm just a peon and a nobody, you need that. I got to close, but I want to say this. I can't help it. Years ago, decades ago, I was in the faith movement studying it before it got warped a bit. And I was there at a black faith church because I deal with a lot of people. You know, I, I love them. So I was there to take a class on faith because they taught so well. He was a really great teacher. So I went, and then I went a couple of times to visit their church back then. And I heard the pastor say, this is a point for Mega. The pastor had been sent back then. He, he chose, the Lord sent him to an area that was really in the urban part of the city that was poverty, a lot of poverty and a lot of no money, low income. But because of God and his word and faith, over time they repopulated it, grew it, resurrected it, and then set up a really nice church that was a really great church for many years. Well, the people who had been to the church also got the word about how God can, you know, provide and provide and make your business grow. And so back then, in the, I guess, the 80s, they had gotten this beautiful church with a lot of people that were formerly poor, but also now they were all kinds. Some were lawyers and doctors, but they also had people that had been poor that were now well-dressed. They could well-dressed. They weren't proud. It was at the beginning of these movements, so everything was really amazing. However, the pastor made a comment when I want to, it really affected me. He said, now that the people in the part of the city, because they were surrounded by the poverty, but they weren't poor, they were trying to have influence and win people to the Lord. They were genuine. So he said, but now that everybody, you know, can afford to look nice and they wanted to glorify the Lord to look nice and be responsible, which is normal. He said, now that the people are coming in and out and they look well-dressed, the people that are poor are intimidated and they feel unworthy and not good enough to come in. Now, that is not the fault of the people who believe God, they're pure in heart. They just look nice for the Lord. But it teaches me how much respect is needed. I learned what I've been through. It's not about your look or your size or your style or your gift. It's about what the lost and unsaved think about it when they come. The new visitor, the mom who's been abused, the single parent who's had a nightmare getting funding for her three children, and she's, you know, barely making it, but she pays gas and a price to bring the children to church to be in your ministry. And then you treat them, I mean, then you disrespect them and you look like they're an evil harlot, that they're a devil coming to take from you in your ministry. I have never seen what I have seen just fellowshipping with some of these ministries that move in the gifts that have the Holy Spirit. I've never seen it in my life. It's an anathema. It's disgusting. It's perturbing. It is a judgment. If you don't, I would think God would say, I'm not, I'm not happy. This is, I built churches. I let you, you know, a lot of them grow big and mammoth to have help people. But now, maybe you're stale. Maybe you got an ego. Maybe you've forgotten how it was to be winning the lost, you know? Because now it's not about that. It's about keeping the status quo. And I come in out of hell in Dallas, paying a price for the Lord with a smile basically on my face because I know God. I don't think, you know, bad. I just think, you know, but I've paid a price. I come up, don't know anybody. All I want to do is an invisible person, be in the seats and be with God. Get restored, take time off, feel good. You know, just be with God because that's how I do it. I can't go to certain clans and clubs. I can't go. There's pollution and there's doctrinal weird stuff in their bath waters, demeaning selective, typecasting, bias, demeaning and degrading, dismissive, and 
whoa, bias, disrespectful in their bath waters. And they say they're Christian ministry. This is Christian ministry. We advertise. We are saved. Come to Jesus' house. Oh, yeah. The standard come to Jesus' house means, should mean, respectful for everybody. Equal opportunity, real respect, no bias, no false teaching. <laughs> no uh, spectral evidence in the... <laughs> not in the occult, not in the psychic, spectral evidence. So... When you know that, after a while, you you know you forgive them, but you got to get out to protect your soul. Your soul is a valuable thing. You don't want to be beaten down. See, if you know, if you're a prophet, you perceive these realms. You know what they're doing. You know what's going on. It's like arrows. It's like putting, the, not them, it's the devil putting arrows in your soul to cloud you, make you feel depressed, make you feel suppressed you know they're watching but they're not speaking it's very unfriend and loving it's very disgusting disturbing biased it's accusing is what it is it's accusing you for it's because they're seeing good evil evil good isaiah 5 they've got issues so i'm telling you if you've been around it clean up your you know get out the issue is if you feel guilty and you've done nothing you feel under a dark cloud when you go there you feel you've done nothing and yet like you're not good enough time after time they have issues false teaching so i you know i am funny i have a great time when i'm not having to think of this sober stuff but i think the scowl of false doctrine you can tell if they're staring and aloof their staff their second in command they're all too stodgy or, you know, it's just like, it's really pretty bad. I was raised a Baptist. You know, I think I was raised normal. So you got to train people now. Every bit of the way in churches, you got to train them. Be normal. Keep one foot in normal, not paranormal, but normal relationships. Jesus went about good doing good healing all the that were oppressed by the devil and the lord was with him acts 10 38 jesus went about relating respecting being available he went about doing good and the lord was with him he healed all those that were oppressed by the devil so who oppresses not jesus the devil oppresses did Jesus Christ oppress people and suppress people and withstand people and accuse people unjustly? No. Then who is the father of people who would do that in these subgroups? Who are they resembling? If they say they represent Christ, I know who Christ is. A lot of people do. But they act like Leviathan, they act like Beelzebub, the father of lies. <laughs> then who are you representing? Who are you choosing to represent at that ministry? Is it Christ or Antichrist? It's Antichrist. If you accuse innocence, have bias, withstand people, Oppose people, and you've never communicated and found out if you're true. You've never Matthew 18, 15 through 6, and nobody's doing that. If you've never Galatians 6, 1, sat down and heard their heart, and you think, oh, they're coming to take from us. Oh, they're this. Oh, they're that. You are lying to yourself, and you are acting like the Antichrist, the anti-fellowship, the anti-safe place, the anti-accepted and the beloved. And that's all I'm going to say. God is good, his mercy endures, and if you can't fellowship, you can't find fellowship that's not like that, go somewhere else. Get online, join us on onlinefellowship.us when it's back up. It's not off today until a couple of days. But, um, and, and then 
have your own find people invite them over have a party and just worship the lord and read the bible do that just let's start let's invent new methods of church fellowshipping hebrews with the saints we want to keep what's good in the old you know we do we want to keep if they're safe and they're a mega ministry go i go i like big but i'm not going to be where there's secret doctrines in the bathwater that control me micromanage me or make me feel evil for showing up make me feel poor because they're so proud i'm not going to go where there's misogynist suppression or just the evil eye so we're going to talk about it confront it and we love them enough to say it god bless you he loves you this is tavo drc signing off for now bye bye